Hello, and welcome to Planscape. Planscape is a new wildfire resilience planning and support tool designed to help landscape scale planners understand where to most effectively set treatments using the best science and data available. All the data in this demo is taken from the California Regional Resource Kits. And right now, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the data in the resource kits and how it can be used on the Planscape platform. If you want to go to the program and look around, you can do that without logging in by going to the Planscape homepage and clicking the Explore button. Now, before we go any further, this demo is made for users that have some experience with GIS tools and treatment planning. If you have any questions that the demo does not answer, please contact us at the link on the screen. Having clicked on the Explore button, we are now at Planscape's map page, where a drop-down menu at the top left provides access to the four regional resource kit areas. In this demo, we will be exploring the Sierra Nevada region. Planscape offers three ways of looking at up to four map layers. We have maps one through four here, and above it, we have a full frame view option for those maps, a side-by-side -side option, and a two-by-two -two panel arrangement. In this example, map one is preloaded with the CalMapper fire history for 1993 through 2021, shown in the blue outlines. Additionally, this map shows the stand density index and RGB shading, here, I can use the plus and minus buttons to zoom in and out and get a feel for the data at a meso and macro scale. Moving to map two, we have the USGS's HUC-12 watersheds overlaid on the current vegetated stress during extreme drought data layer. So these drop-down menus give us access to all of the Sierra Nevada Regional Resource Kit's data sets. Additionally, I can add roads, terrain, and satellite imagery layers to these base maps. Moving down, I can add or remove boundaries such as counties, watersheds, national forests, and fire scars, including prescribed burns. Below that, I can select existing projects in the recent treatment areas menu to display the management activities that have been or are being implemented on the landscape. Cal Fire's Cal Mapper provides the recent treatment data. Now let's take a look at the regional resource data found at the bottom of the menu. This drop-down menu is organized around the state's 10 pillars of resilience, air quality, biodiversity conservation, etc. Each of these pillars has a drop-down where I can look at the elements comprising each, as we see here in fire adapted communities and fire dynamics. We have about 80 separate metrics for the Sierra Nevada region. There are significantly more metrics in the Northern California, Central Coast, and Southern California regions. Nonetheless, these metrics are updated in Planscape roughly every six months, ensuring that the most up-to-date data informs the user's planning. So, digging into the various metrics, if I go to Fire Dynamics and click into Functional Fire, I can select Probability of High Severity Fire. As one might expect, vast swaths of the Sierra Nevada have a high probability of high severity fire. If I want more information on this map layer, I can click the information icon on the right side of the selected metric. The window that pops up tells me the data units, the value range, and the source of the information. In this case, the Sierra Nevada Regional Resource Kit. If I click this link, it will take me to the resource kit where I can access the metrics dictionary and find significantly more information on this layer and all the other layers in the resource kit. The pop-up window also gives me the data provider, which in this case is Pyrologix. Finally, I can download the metrics raw data here. You can get this information for all metric layers within the resource kit by following these same steps. We briefly mentioned this above, but one of the neat things about Planscape's design is that there is more than one way of viewing map layers. I can look at one, two, or four maps at a time. Each of the maps maintains an identical frame of reference and scale. So, if I wanna go in and start evaluating a specific area with different data layers, I can do that more efficiently by using the two or four map view. Let's say we wanna do some planning up in Sierra County along the Yuba River and I want to go in and look at the probability of high severity fire in the area. Let's zoom out a bit and put the area of interest in perspective. 
Seeing that large areas to the north do not have the same risk of high severity fire, we may want to include the fire history layer. Ah yes, recent large scale fires explain much of the difference we've observed. Up here is the massive Dixie fire scar, and the North Complex fire is down here. Given the scale and severity of recent fires north of the Yuba watershed, and the likelihood of high severity fires shown here in the watershed, this is an excellent place to focus on for an applied example of treatment planning with this tool. Before we move into the planning stage, let's quickly look at some other metrics we may want to consider before settling on a treatment area. For example, I can swap out my vegetative stress layer to look at biodiversity concerns such as spotted owl habitat. This layer shows suitable owl habitat in purple that is quite dense and could pose additional regulatory requirements on a treatment. Spotted owl habitat is just one of several biodiversity conservation metrics we can visually assess. For instance, we can look at the forest resilience pillar and click into forest structure, settling on the stand density index. In Western fire adapted forests, stand density is a good indicator of forest health as well as risk of high severity fire. So, using this metric and the many others available in Planscape, we can get a good handle on the landscape we're targeting. From this point, we can narrow down where we may want to start planning proposed treatment locations. The next step would be to draw an area of interest to begin the planning process. But from here, you'll need to create an account if you don't already have one. I have an account, so I just sign in. If you don't have an account already, you simply go through the steps to create an account, including verifying your email address. After you verify your account, you're good to go, and you can move on to the planning stage. From here, I'm going to log in. I've already done some planning, but if you're a new user, you'll be starting from scratch. You will need to go back to the Explore page. From there, you can select or upload a treatment area. For the purposes of this tutorial, I want to look at treating a large area based on its risk of high severity fire. In the case of the Yuba River drainage, it's pretty straightforward. We have high stand density in this area, as well as a very high probability of high severity fire. However, as noted before, a treatment in this area will have the added consideration of working in spotted owl habitat. While this is not an uncommon factor when working in the Sierra Nevada, it is a good example of how Planscape informs the user of the pertinent factors to consider when planning a forest treatment. Okay, let's go in and take a look at our area of interest in more depth. I will start by simply drawing a polygon around the Yuba drainage upstream from New Billard's Bar Reservoir that I may want to pull for treatment. Alternately, I could upload a shapefile if I already have a treatment area lined out. All the information connected to the shapefile or polygon produced in Planscape will stay with it once I create and save the project. I'm going to name our demo project Test Area 5 and save it. That takes us to the scenarios page. This page tells me about the area either uploaded or, in this case, drawn in as the polygon. So here's the area of interest I drew on the previous page. I can add some notes, which is a good way to provide other planners or collaborators with information about the area. But this page also tells me how many acres I plant. The polygon I drew covers about 130,000 acres. This is an important number for planning. We'll see why in just a moment. And from here, I can go in and start to plan new scenarios by clicking on the new scenarios button. So what are scenarios? Scenarios are Planscape's way of presenting different treatment options to the user based on their stated goals and constraints. For example, suppose my goal is to treat areas at risk of high severity fire within our polygon. In that case, I can have Planscape tell me the best place to lay my treatments on the landscape to get the maximum benefit for reducing high severity fire risk. I can set similar treatment goals to reduce fire risk in the wildland urban interface. Alternately, I can look at fuel load reduction opportunities or areas that would be suitable for prescribed burning treatments. Treatment goal options continue further down in the menu under biodiversity. 
For example, I can look at how to reduce fire risk to riparian or owl habitats, reduce fire risk in wildlife rich areas, or reduce fire exposure to threatened and endangered species. Finally, we can set goals related to carbon and biomass, such as the effects on carbon sinks and how to reduce fire risk in carbon sink areas. Keep in mind that you can only have one treatment goal per run, but you can run as many scenarios as you want. Note that if you hover over any specific treatment goal options, a text box will appear providing more information on the individual goals. The treatment goals are essentially questions that are pre-calculated using a tool called FORCES, which the Forest Service developed in collaboration with several research institutions. Planscape uses FORCES on the back end. The variables that the user selects in the treatment goals menu align with each of these questions and produce treatment option outputs that will pop up in a moment. There's a lot of information on FORCES, spelled F-O-R-S-Y-S, -S, online as the tool is widely used by the Forest Service. We encourage users to take a look at it so that they know what's going on under the hood. So before we run our first scenario, let's name it. I like to use the details of this scenario in the name. So I'll call it High Sev Fire 90K Medium. Since addressing high severity fire areas is the treatment goal, I'm going to constrain the treatments to 90,000 acres and I'm going to run it at a medium stand size. Okay, let's unpack that name because a lot went into it that we haven't discussed yet. On this run, we're telling forces to use the probability of fire severity high layer that we looked at in the regional resource kit when we drew our initial treatment area polygon. So this run will have a threshold of probability fire severity high greater than zero. Pretty straightforward. Here, in the constraints menu, we will limit the outputs to 90,000 acres. Whether you're using a shapefile or a drawn-in polygon for planning, the tool has boundaries of 20% as a minimum and 80% as a maximum. So, refer to the treatment area acreage, in this case 130,000 acres, and constrain the treatment accordingly. You can also input a max budget, distance from roads, and max slope angle in the suggested treatment areas. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm not going to include those constraints. As an aside, treatment costs are defined in the regional resource kits, but those projected costs can be changed here. For instance, if I want to change the treatment cost to $2,500 an acre, I can do that. Finally, I can adjust the stand sizes. Stand size is very important in terms of treatment outputs. I'm going to start with medium for this demo, but keep in mind that the more granular, that is, the smaller the stand size you select, the more accurate the output will be. The way Planscape calculates stand sizes is that a small stand size equals 10 acres per stand, a medium is 100 acres, and a large stand size is 500 acres. So, as stated, we will start with a medium stand size for the suggested treatment area outputs. Finally, here at the bottom, we can add exclusion areas such as parks, private, or tribal land. However, something to keep in mind with this tool is that if you over exclude lands within your treatment area, like if we were to go in and click all these exclusion options, there might not be anything left to treat. This problem can be compounded if you've selected constraints such as distance from roads and max slope. That being said, we didn't select any exclusions and our sole constraint is sand size. So we should be in good shape on this run. So I will click on the generate button here at the bottom of the screen. Another vital detail to remember is that if you select the small stand size option, Planscape will take longer to run. While 90,000 acres had a pretty quick response time, if you're working on a half million acre treatment plan, you want to get your variables down before you execute a small stand size run because it could take 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, so here is our output for our treatment run. The first thing to know is that these three outputs are number and color coded to make it easy to cross reference. On the right, we have a mosaic of 10 areas that Planscape has deemed optimal for high severity fire risk treatment. If you recall, in the constraints menu on the previous page, I set the output to 90,000 acres. 
However, the total area of our polygon is around 130,000 acres. So, Planscape evenly splits up that 90,000 acres across 10 proposed treatment areas. 90,000 acres was arbitrarily selected to demonstrate how the tool will process max acreage constraints. Moving to the left side of the screen, on the top, we see the 10 project areas, again numbered and color-coded to match the other outputs on the screen, with statistics describing each. First, we have the acreage of each project area. And next to that, the percentage of the original 130,000 acres that the project covers. Following that is the estimated cost. And then all the way on the right, we have the score column. The forces tool that produces the output we're looking at also renders a score that ranks the projects on both cost and treatment effectiveness based on the treatment goal. In this case, probability of high severity fire. Essentially, the higher the score, the more bang you get for your buck. If you want to pop the hood and take a look at the details of the force's score, there's a lot of material online. Moving on to the bottom left graphical output, we can look at the secondary metrics we've identified from the regional resource kits. These secondary metrics are valuable for planners to look at as they allow one to compare the scores of the secondary metrics to the original treatment goal. Again, for this demo, that's treating areas with high probability of high severity fire. If we click on the map icon on the left side of each graph down here, that metric will appear on the treatment area map. In this case, you can see that there's a lot of opportunity to treat for high severity fire in this particular area. I can also look at the spotted owl habitat or dead and down carbon. Let's bring that up on the map. I can also select the drop down menu on any of these graphs and change the secondary metric. Again, by selecting the map icon, I can look at the saw timber biomass. These graphical displays allow me to quickly and effectively visualize how a particular treatment goal lines up with the other potential treatment priorities and concerns. Keep in mind that this is just a starting point for a treatment analysis. Planscape is designed to be iterative allowing users to produce multiple scenarios for comparison. From this point, I can go on to build other scenarios, or I can download this project as a shapefile or CSV, allowing for further analysis in Excel or with a GIS tool. That's the basic overview of the Planscape tool. We appreciate your interest and welcome your feedback. For more information on the tool and how to connect with us, please visit planscape.org.